Jan Crawford is in Washington, where Congress may change the Pentagon's war surplus program. Jan, this is a big story. Good morning. Well, yeah, I mean, it is. Good morning. I mean, a Georgia congressman has just introduced federal legislation that would limit uh, the military equipment that goes to local police, saying tanks and M-16s just don't belong on the streets of America. But law enforcement officials tell us that that surplus equipment also can help them, especially as criminals are using deadlier weapons. For several nights this week, this was Ferguson, Missouri. Tanks, combat gear, assault rifles. It looked like a military operation. You must disperse immediately. And that's because police departments in the St. Louis area, like those across the country, are arming their officers with equipment once on the battlefields of Iraq and Afghanistan. Much of it is free of charge or bought with federal grant money authorized by Congress. In the past year, the Department of Defense has given local law enforcement over 600 MRAPs, the armored vehicles designed to withstand roadside bombs. Texas alone received 68, Florida 45. The Warren County Sheriff's Department in upstate New York also got one. Bud York is sheriff. I'm hoping I never have to use this vehicle, but if I do have to use it, I'm not going to have to worry about my people or possibly the public being injured because it certainly can save them. The Pentagon program has given departments over $5 billion worth of surplus equipment since the program launched in 1991. Helicopters, firearms, protective gear, night vision, even computers and camouflage clothing. The local police also get federal grant money to buy the military-style equipment. One recent study found the federal government has doled out more than $34 billion to local police departments since the September 11th terrorist attacks. But critics say local police aren't the military, that some of the equipment and tactics should not be routinely used against American citizens. There's a, um, a feeling that you have to justify having it, so you have to find reasons to use it, even if those reasons um, you know, aren't really commiserate with the threat that the police are actually facing. Former New York City Police Detective Bo Deedle says the answer is proper training. If you're going to have all these advanced weaponry, you must train the people. That must come part and parcel. You're going to buy it, you know how to use it, and know when to use it. Now, law enforcement in St. Louis County have gotten more than half a million dollars worth of military equipment from the Pentagon, including seven Humvees and a dozen M-16s. Critics, of course, are saying their tactics were heavy-handed. And yesterday, we saw the governor put the state highway patrol in charge of security there in Ferguson. And, of course, last night, those protests were peaceful. Jane. Thanks, Jan. You know, I mean, there are a lot of ways to look at this, but I'm thinking when you train a police officer to use military style weapon from the battlefield how are you changing that officer's uh, you know psychological sense of what his duty is it's sort of, sort of soldierizing if I may coin a phrase sure. maybe that's not such a good idea do they see the people they're interacting with as an enemy combatant yeah. yes and very different when the new captain uh, who took over in Ferguson walked the streets without a gas mask on how that immediately calmed tensions there Indeed. without all of the combat gear on all yeah. right